Hi, AP Calculus BC students. Mr. Record here from Avon High School for video number two, example two, dealing with topic 9.3, all about finding arc length and parametric. I'm going to take a little twist on this one in two different ways. This one is more about finding the distance traveled, which we discussed in the previous video, is the same thing. So if you've got a particle or a bug traveling along some parametric curve, finding the distance that bug travels is the exact same thing as finding the arc length along the curve. Curve. Our particular example today will be heavily graphing calculator influence, so you'll need your graphing calculators uh, for this particular problem. If you don't have it with you, pause the video, grab it, and you can follow along with me. Let's take a look at example number two. Now before we do that, I'm going to revisit a, a theorem uh, from a previous video that we discussed about what the formula is for finding either arc length or in this case distance traveled. And that's just simply taking the square root of the sum of the squares of the derivatives of your x and your y equations and then integrating that result over the given t values that you're uh, using in that particular problem. So it has a nice little kind of flow to it. If you didn't get a chance to watch the previous video, I outlined how this formula is evolved, or how it evolves, I should say, from the arc length formula from rectangular. So what does our example two look like? Well, we have a particle traveling along a curve in the xy plane. No surprise there. It's got a position of x of t, y of t at any time t, as long as t is positive or zero. We're told that dx over dt is the inverse tangent of e to the negative t, while dy over dt is 3t all over 1 plus 4t cubed. Find the distance traveled by the particle on the time interval 1 to 2. Now, if you notice, this problem has actually made our lives a little bit easy. One of our key steps in assembling this arc length formula has been done for us, and that's one of the things that I wanted to make sure that we pointed out. These two particular expressions are indeed derivative expressions. Therefore, when we find this arc length or this distance traveled, and it doesn't really matter what you call it, L, if you want to call it D, it's one and the same. We just need to integrate the square root of the sum of the squares of these two expressions. So what we could do is either write them out using the notation dx, dt, dy, dt, which is probably what I would suggest because it's so easy to make a, a mistake otherwise. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to go ahead and use their specific names. Just be really careful and don't miscopy it because that could lead to some issues on the advanced placement exam in terms of earning full credit. Plus it could cause you to not have it typed into your calculator correctly. So there would be our inverse tangent of e to the negative t squared. And then here would be our 3t all over 1 plus 4t cubed squared. And then don't forget, we're going to take the square root of all of that. We're going to integrate with respect to t. And lo and behold, the boundaries 1 and 3 had already been provided to us. Like I said, it would be very easy for a student to think, oh, gosh, no, I have to take the derivative of each of these things. Oh, no big deal. I'm going to use the calculator. And it wouldn't be that big of a deal for your calculator to do that. But you have to understand that these are presented to you as derivatives already. And so that part has already been taken care of for you. Unfortunately, I won't be able to sketch a graph of this parametric curve because I don't know what x is and I don't know what y is. And I'm not really given enough information to be able to find that in this particular instance. Let's move over to our graphing calculator and see what it says. So here we are using, once again, the TI Inspire. Uh, you don't need a CAS model for this. Any kind of TI Inspire would work. The TI-84 would work wonderfully as well. A little bit different interface. I'll kind of talk through those buttons here in a moment for those of you that are following along with the TI-84. On the Inspire, what we're going to do is we want to bring up a uh, definite integral uh, notation. And the shortcut to do that is Shift Plus. Those of you using the uh, TI-84 are going to be going into Math 9, and you pretty much are seeing the same sim symbol on your calculator. We're going to go ahead and enter our in uh, boundaries of integration, 1 to 2 in this case. Let's not forget that square root symbol. That's all important. Whoops, we don't want a square. We want a square root symbol. Control. OK. And now I'm going to enter 
my expression inverse tangent e to the negative t. A couple of different ways you can do that. I'm going to go into the trig menu and choose this inverse tan. Those of you using the uh, uh, TI-84 are probably going to hit like a second uh, tan button to do that. And here's our e to the negative t power. Notice I have an extra parenthesis around so that I can easily square that. And it's really important. You want to make sure that that square is outside the second parenthesis. Otherwise, it will not be affecting or operating upon the inverse tangent. Had it been in this location where my cursor is, it would only act upon the e to the negative 2. That's really important. Sometimes knowing how to use your calculator is a very vital part of the AP exam in scoring about four or five of those uh, uh, calculator active points. We're going to add to that another expression squared. So let's go ahead and put that parenthesis in. Uh, pull up um, a fraction template, however you are going to do that on your particular calculator. The Inspire says uh, Control Divide will do a good job with that. And then I enter 3 times t all over 1 plus 4 t all raised to the third power. The t to the third power that is. And then I'm going to square that particular fraction, the parentheses there make that easy, and then you need to put in your differential here with respect to t. All should go well when I hit enter, and I get this decimal answer. Again, don't worry so much about little warnings that you might get. Result obtained using approximate arithmetic. That's the only way the Inspire knows how to do such a complicated integration problem like this. There could be some, a variety of things happening in the background, Riemann sums and so, and so what. So we are good to say that our answer is rounded to three digits as 0 0.406 or 0 0.407. Let's take that back to our document. And so as I said before, we're going to get an approximation here. You could use an equals there. It's kind of nice to put that approximately there. And I'm just going to truncate in this case. Uh, 407 would work just as well. It's really important that even though this problem is heavily reliant upon the calculator, I just don't want to write only the point 406. Anytime on the AP exam, and I would venture to say your exams in your classroom. I know for my students, my exams are going to be structured this way, that you would need to at least write down the expression that you were working with in your calculator, whether it was a derivative expression, whether it was an integral expression, maybe it was an equation that you were trying to solve that was very complicated. At least write that on paper to earn the credit for, quote, the work that is required by the problem. Yeah, we're going to let the calculator do all the busy, dirty work, but at least we need to see exactly what your plan was on paper. Hope this helps. We have one more video for this particular topic coming up. We'll see you next time.